Hello and welcome to the second video in this indoor weather station tutorial series. In this video I will be going through all the equipment that I'll be using. Now don't freak out, you don't necessarily need all of these. Um, you can basically pick and choose as you go along. What you will need though is a Raspberry Pi. And in this case I'll be using the Raspberry Pi Zero. Like I said in the first video, this is a miniature computer. <clears throat> and what a computer definitely needs is power. So for this I'm using um, a micro USB cable. Just make sure that it's 5 volt and Raspberry Pi compatible. Next, a computer needs a hard drive, and in this case, this is a micro SD card. Um, you'll need to insert that into your computer at least uh, once, so you might need one of these adapters. Next, you'll need an external display, and your display will most likely have an HDMI cable like this one. So for that, then you'll need an adapter to be able to insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Finally, we have one last port here, which is also micro USB. <clears throat> and here we need to insert a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. So in this case, the mouse has this sort of standard um, USB stick. And here again, we need, a, uh, um, we need an adapter to insert it into the Raspberry Pi. So now the sensors. Here again, you don't need to use all the ones that I have, but I found that this was a really good comprehensive collection. So just real quick, we have the BME280, uh, which measures pressure, temperature, and humidity. The TSL2561, which is a LUX sensor, so it measures light. SGP30, which is a gas sensor that measures volatile organic compounds, and something called e, um, ECO2. Then we have a distance measure called the VL53LOX, a CO2 sensor called S8, a sound sensor called MAX4466, and a wind speed sensor called the REV-C. Finally, for these two last sensors, we need a so-called analog to digital converter, in this case, the MCP3008. Now, the final, in the final product, we will solder everything onto a so-called perf, perf board. So you'll need one of those. And the way I want to do that is I'm not going to solder the sensors directly onto the perf board. Instead, I'm going to leave slots like this where we can um, replace sensors in case they break. So in order to do that, we will need these male headers, which we solder to the sensors. <clears throat> these then plug into the female headers, which in turn we then solder to the perf board. Before we do that though, we will use a so-called breadboard to do a lot of the prototyping, which doesn't require soldering. Instead, we use these so-called jumper wires. And you, if you're just soldering on the breadboard, <clears throat> you use male jumper wires, so male to male. But there are also female jumper wires, which you'll need, for instance, if you have a male header somewhere, then you can attach it like so. This part won't attach here, so we have things like these um, extra long uh, male pins where you can then make the connection. At some point you'll realize the more sensors you have, the more cluttered the breadboard is going to become with all these cables. So instead you can use um, this more generic um, uh, wire where basically if you strip the edges, sorry, strip the ends, then you can make connections like this that are just much neater. Now down here I have a bunch of uh, tools. What you'll definitely need is a soldering iron. And note that there are different types of, of tips. So I like the flat ones, other, uh, other people like the pointy ones, it doesn't really matter that much. The soldering irons usually come with um, either a sponge like this that you wet and then you can use it to clean the tip or it'll have um, this metal wall for cleaning, which I, which I find is better. After a while, the tip might get rusty, and for that then you'll need a um, solder tip cleaner, but I would hold off with that for now. It probably won't happen to you in the course of this uh, tutorial series. This is the actual solder, which is basically just metal that melts at a low temperature, and we use this as, as glue, basically. I always find it's helpful to have some blue tack lying around just to fixate things uh, to, the to the desk while I solder. Other people use these helping hands, but um, I find them a little bit um, finicky, so I, I rarely use them. 
By the way, while you're soldering, make sure to always have some kind of uh, protection like uh, glasses or magnifying glass in this case. Um, here, in case you uh, mess up a solder job, you'll probably need something like this, which is a desoldering pump. This is just a wire stripper, fairly self-explanatory. And then there's these standard tools like a cutter, tweezers, or different types of pliers that will definitely come in handy. Anyway, I'll leave um, links to all of these things in the description below. And like I said, you can pick and choose as you go along. Anyway, that was the end of this um, video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.